bad to the bone, 400 naturally aspirated <laughs> small block. So we have been trying to build this engine for almost two years now and we are finally around to it. Got all the parts and pieces. And we got the man to myth the legend. 1000 HP Craig. Let's not get carried away now. <laughs> so we already had a small block build on our channel, the 350. So this video, we're not showing you how to put together a small block. Oh. We're just showing you how we're gonna put together a small block. Yeah, how we're doing it. <laughs> and, what, and, and what parts we're gonna use in it. Yes, so. This, 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 is, this isn't your average run of the mill small block. We're mostly gonna be focusing on the nitpicking, um, meticulous stuff that a lot of people don't do. So a lot of the, Rocker geometry setup, uh, checking the bore sizes and how to set all that with main, the main bearing size. Yes. So there is a lot of trick parts. Let's not waste any time. I don't know how many parts this video series is gonna be. If it's gonna be three or four, I'm not sure. As many as it needs to be. Just buckle down, get your popcorn, your Skittles. Let's, let's do it, come on now. We're putting together the 400 small block that is a dart, pretty much dart headed dart, it's all dart. For good old Dave's 67 Camaro. So this is what we're going in here. We got a dart S SHP, SHP? SHP, special high performance. I got this block from dart, fully machined, how you see it. It's, it's pretty much, they wash it. I mean, we had to wash it again, but it's supposed to be prepped, ready to go. It has 350 mains. It's a splayed cap, main cap, you know, four bolt. They already added the freeze plugs. They did the final hone. Um, they put the, the cam bearings in it. I mean, it's ready to go. All the plugs are in it. What started this whole build is I bought, I had two, two separate friends, two separate buddies that were uh, selling engine parts. And I was gonna combine, you know, take this guy's stuff and this guy's stuff and fill in the voids and build a small block. It turned into this. It's pretty much an all new small block. Nothing's really used. So now we're gonna uh, verify that our piston wall clearance is right. We already checked it with an outboard gauge. And now we're going to go through and spot check it with an inside mic and an outside mic and just confirm that our measurements are 100% correct. So are your measurements 100% correct? We're going to find out in a minute. <laughs> so now I'm going to measure the piston for verifying our piston to wall clearance. And uh, with the instructions that come with most pistons, they give you a, what they refer to as a gauge point, which is where they want you to measure the clearance at. In this case, it's giving you 500 thousandths down from the bottom of the oil ring land. So I've already taken the time to mark that very lightly, uh, put a mark on there to be able to measure that accurately. I like to use a little bit of a weight instead of holding it in my hand. It's a little more accurate to have the piston sitting flat and then be able to balance the mic with both hands. Come in, get the points of the mic across the center of the gauge point, and then take your reading and confirm it's what we want. So, so is that what we want? Uh, yes. Yep. It's uh, within two tenths of the uh, manufacturer's recommendation. So, yep, that's what we want. So first we torqued all the mains on without the bearing shells in them to verify that the housing bores are all the same size. Once you've verified that, we're gonna go in and in this case, since we know the sizes are the same, I just torqued a number two main cap on and verifying the uh, clearance between the inside of the bearing shell to the OD of the crankshaft. In this case, I've verified it uh, with an inside mic to verify that uh, my measurements are what I think they are, what they should be. Some people used uh, more gauges. An inside mic can be just as accurate if used properly. So I use a very light drag to sweep through the bearing. And then I use the same measurement with the uh, OD of the mic and sweep that and verify my clearance is what we want it to be. So Mr. Craig is in the process of gapping the rings. And to describe this to you that don't know, we got these rings here for the 4125 bore size. So they, when you put them in, they touch. As you can see right here, they touch. So what he's doing is he is sanding it down for a 20,000th gap. That's what we're shooting for on the, uh, the top ring on the pistons. This is what the 20,000th 20th thousand, how, how, do you, how do you say that? 20, 20 thousand. This is what the 20,000th gap looks like. 
You might not be able to tell it on camera, but it is very small, very small. A dart action machine, finished machine this block and honed it. And we're gonna verify that they honed it properly. So we're gonna check the uh, surface roughness with the uh, tool that I have. It's an older Mitsutoyo profilometer. And it actually has a device that sweeps up and down the bore with a little needle point and measures the bore finish and then gives it to us in a report. And with this older machine, it has a printer. So we can actually print off the report and save it with the engine build. And we're focusing on uh, three areas uh, called RPK, RVK, and RK. And uh, companies like Total Seal have provided a lot of great information for what we're looking to do for, for, for um, any particular application. And it varies from race engine versus street. So this engine has a, a 12 PK, a 46 uh, RVK, and a 33 RK, which is very good and right in uh, kind of the guidelines of what Total Seal recommends for a high performance street engine. Uh, Dart did a good job and uh, everything checks out. Where the mains wanna be in 2.7? Two and a two half. five, two six on the mains with coated, coated uh, Cleavite H series. And it, like I said, it has a coated cam bearing, so we went with the coated mains and rods. So it's really, really nice deal. So the crank that we're using, we had to add. Um, Craig balanced it, had to rebalance it. He had to add some weight because the new assembly, um, pretty much in the pistons, because it's the same rods and crank that were used in the previous combination. I bought this, like I talked about, from a previous buddy. He ran this in his car. He changed the block because he went to a Pro Charger. It's still standard standard on the bearings, but he rebalanced it because my piston pin setup is heavier than what was previous used. So we're running a scat crank, just the 350 mains, 375 stroke. So it's a 400 to standard bore. So it's a 4.125 bore on the block, right? Yep. So standard bore 400. Six inch rod. It's got a six inch H beam rod that we're running in it. We got new rod bolts because the rods are used. So we're, we got the we got it all prepped here, ready to put the crank in it. Yep, crank's going in. Craig's dying to do it. He can't wait to put this thing can't in here. Wait. <laughs> so he's feeling strong. So leave see, it all to him, man. Rip a shirt right now. Go. You notice when he put the crank in here that he didn't didn't start spinning it and going crazy with it, like like I mentioned when they we built the other small block. Is it any need to set the crank in here and give it a couple spins? Not really, not until you get the other main caps on. I put the I put one through four main caps on, get them snug down, and then I start checking in play. Uh, there is times that I'll check it if I'm concerned about something unusual I see on a, on a used engine. Sometimes I'll check it before I put the main, all you, the main caps on. How do you check it? <clears throat> check it by feel? No. Sometimes I'll go by feel just to start, but if I feel that it feels tight, but I'll get the one through four main caps on, and then I'll get my dowel indicator out, and then I'll just do a rough check first. On the thrust? And on the thrust with no main cap on the rear, and I'll see what it is, because what it has with no main cap on, it should be what it is after the engine is assembled. Right. So if it has five thousandths now with four caps on, it should have five after I put the main cap on the back, because if the cap's not set right, it can lose, you can lose all of your input. What you putting on? So this is a wore out tube of uh, CMD number three. Did you, it's, find, did you find it on the backyard? Maybe. <laughs> Dart uses this exclusively for all their fasteners. A lot of uh, engine builders use it with uh, all of their fasteners. Started at NASCAR, uh, it was really popular with NASCAR guys in the, the 80s and 90s and <clears throat> it's kind of just morphed out of there. I hope that's not when you pick that tube up. It almost looks like it. checking the end play. I put caps one through four on the engine, uh, torqued them down, and now I did, a, I did a quick check. I was using my screwdrivers, but now I just did a quick a rough check here to verify that it has the appropriate amount of air end play without the main cap on the back. As you notice, the number five main cap is missing. So now we'll go ahead and lube it up, put it on, torque it down, and verify that we have the same amount of end play 
to confirm that the cap is set in the place where it needs to be for the uh, the thrust parting lines to be made it up and aligned with each other so it's not influencing the crank one way or the other because if we don't have end play it'll burn the main thrust out of the engine and we'll be taking it back apart and sad we want to do that let's not do that a lot of people like to use a hammer a sand type mallet and beat it back and forth, which is okay. Something I've done for years, but I learned a trick from an old timer to get the counterweight up. So you learned a trick from yourself? And to rock the crank back and forth between a torqued main cap on the counter on the counterweights here. And it tends to set the main cap much more accurately than trying to beat it. Because a lot of times when you hit it with a sand mallet, it just kind of springs back and doesn't really take a set. This way you really move the crank through its range and it kind of holds the cap in place. And then once you have the same end play that you had before, then you can go and tighten everything down. I gotta cut my legs off to work on this one. <laughs> so as you see, we got the crank all done here, all the main caps are torqued. In play rechecked to verify that it was the same. It's good, good, work, good to go. We got that. So we did this to um, dart specs, so 65 on the center ones and 35 on the outer. Got 4,000s in play. We are ready to start putting a piston in here and doing some mock-up. Oh man, if you haven't seen the pistons yet. Man, look at that. <whistles> Keep moving it on me. Man. See? Man. The cranking rods I got are from a friend of mine. Um, I guess we'll, we'll keep him nameless. I don't think he wants to be talked about, but he was uh, the engineering guy at BME Pistons and he's the one that designed these pistons and he did the engraving and everything for me. So I had to get a new set of pistons because his setup was similar to this, but he had a problem with his time and chain stretching or something happened and, it, and his valves messed up the pistons that, that was in this, his stock. He had an NA configuration deal that he ran in drag week and stuff and, and he wound up having a problem with the time and chain. So he's the one that designed the piston so they're really trick. I like that he did it that the pin is not in the in the lower groove so you don't have to run the, the spacer and that it has a nice radius pocket for the valve relief so you don't have the sharp sharp uh, hot spots on the pistons and has a nice flow so it turned out really good. So we're gonna get the pistons on the rods here. And we got the rings, the total seal rings already gapped. We can get them all set up here. We can get the pistons put into the into the deal, into the block here. So we're just gonna do a quick mock-up here. I put a second ring on only, and we're gonna go ahead and put this piston in and uh, do a quick mock-up. And it didn't go in. No, Start. You dirty rat. <clears throat> Dang it. Take two. Okay. The video's ruined. Oh, Come man. on. So we want to make sure the piston's square in the more. This is a mistake that a lot of people make. So first I zeroed the gauge out here. Set it at zero. Come over to the piston. Make sure it's, it's on this side. It's minus 10. Go to the other side with the bridge and make sure that it's exactly minus 10. The piston can rock in the bore a lot and then you want to make sure that you have it perfectly square so you don't trick yourself on what your piston in the whole dimension actually is. It's always a good idea to check the rod, the rod bolts, the throw of the rod with aftermarket rods in the block. When they cast this, they, they put a little cast in here for clearance of the rod bolt coming around but you want to check on the bottom of the cylinders also make sure everything's going to make it because the oversized big end of the rod will will hit the block and in, in the bottom of the skirt so that's what we're just checking there just showing you where where the rod's going to come around to throw and, and see where it would hit in different spots but everything looks good they set the block up really nice so old craig man left me unattended here so i'm going to put the i'm going to put the camshaft in this thing while i'm waiting for him to come back we got the cloys time of chain this is like i think the top of the line of the cloys that you can get here it's got the billet 
pulley and then this is the the z chain is supposed to be the best deal for the conventional small block chevys this isn't the original cam that i bought when i bought all these parts to get this thing like i was talking about i got parts you know for two different buddies Craig didn't wind up liking the camshaft that I had. So he got, this is a custom grind. It's a comp cams, but it's it's a custom grind that he came up with because of the cylinder heads. When we get to that, the, the heads that I initially bought were damaged. And that's kind of what started this whole process is I sent the heads to Craig to get fixed uh, and they, were, they were, weren't repairable. So started out, we got a brand new set of heads and then they wound up being better than the original set. So anyways, so that's what we got going on. So this is a, a custom grind. We'll go over the specs here in a little bit. I'm gonna get put in here. I'm gonna use the sprocket. It comes with the thrust, the roller bearing. I put a little bit of oil on it, on the bearing. I'm gonna use the sprocket to put the camshaft in. All this is um, ARP, so we have ARP cam bolts here and ARP off, off fasteners. So I'm gonna put some, put some lube on it and we're gonna, we're gonna put it in here. So I got the camshaft all put in here, so I'll torque. We set it up at zero right now. We're gonna degree it here in a little bit, but we just, this is just our baseline. So we got, um, got it all installed. We, I spun it around a full revolution on the crankshaft just to make sure that the, the lobes, everything's, the cam's happy right now. It doesn't hit anything. So now that the, the man, the myth, uh, Craig should be back here any second. We're gonna get the rest of the pistons put in it. Welcome back. I'm back. All right, so what kind of front engine flex plate do you have going on here? <laughs> this is a special one, B&B &B, uh, degree wheel. So we're going to start uh, degreeing the cam in here. We've installed it uh, just straight up as per the uh, timing chain right now. I've installed the timing, the, the degree wheel, the pointer, <clears throat> and we have a uh, the piston at TDC. Uh, I'm using my dial indicator, and I a lot of times use a, a dead stop if we need to. I get the same results, so I tend to use my dial indicator because I'm just more comfortable with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down a hundred thousandths below top dead center. So as the piston goes down, we're going to go down one hundred thousandths. And I'm going to take a reading. And on the degree wheel, that's at sixteen and a half. So now I'm going to go in reverse back up to top dead center. And then we're going to keep going past. We're going to go down hundred thousandths and go past a hundred thousandths and I'm going to go back into the direction of rotation and very lightly bump my way up to zero again which is a hundred in the hole and at that point we are 15 16 and a half so that tells us that the degree wheel is perfectly true to top dead center if we if we were uh, off on number two or three numbers on one side or the other, we would adjust the degree wheel and do it again until we get it to the point where they match the same side. And you could do this at 200 thousandths in the hole, 300 thousandths in the hole, won't matter, you'll have a, the same result, it'll just be a, a wider spread. So now we know our degree wheel is degreed in to TDC. Okay, so now we move the dial indicator and readjust the position to get it on the uh, intake side. So we're gonna start with degree the intake side in. I have this long travel uh, indicator here with a 5 16 radius, uh, simulates a normal GM style push rod. And what I'm gonna do is I, I put the lifters in dry. I left the lifter bores dry so the there's not lube dragging it up and down which can kind of influence your, your degree. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna verify that, that my lifter goes up and down uh, nice and clean on its own. It returns to zero and is not influenced by anything else in the lifter board there. So I'm gonna rotate until I start to see the lifter come off the seat. And I'm gonna back it up in reverse. I'm gonna verify again that that is returning properly. Sometimes this takes a little, little adjustment, a little fine tuning to get this just right, which is pretty common. There we go. <clears throat> so I'm gonna rotate it all the way through the uh, base circle of the camshaft to make sure that our needle stays where it's supposed to be. We verified that it returns to zero. So now in the direction of rotation, we're gonna go up to 
50 thousandths of opening on the intake side, right there, and we're gonna take a reading. On the degree wheel it says, intake valve is opening 20 degrees here uh, before top dead center. So we can go to our cam card, which is over here, <coughs> and we can compare notes and see where we're at. Well, on the, as for the cam card, uh, we're supposed to be opening at 19. So we're one degree advanced right now, opening at 20. So that's pretty close. So we'll go all the way through and check it uh, on the closing side. I'm also gonna verify low lift here. One, two, three, four, and 428 is indicated here versus 430 thousandths. So that's very close. That's within the deviation of a indicator. So I'm gonna go all the way back down until until we close. I'm gonna go reverse my direction and go past 50 thousandths, <clears throat> spinning in reverse. And then I'm gonna go in the direction of rotation on the closing side. I'm gonna just inch my way up here until I get to 50 thousandths uh, away from closing. And the degree wheel says that we are at a little past 59 and the cam card is calling for 61. Our numbers are deviating a little bit here, so I'll kind of run through this again and double check it. Sometimes it's good to check it the same thing a couple times, make sure the indicator hasn't moved, make sure the numbers repeat, and then uh, we'll decide if we want to make any adjustments to it. Okay, so now we move to the exhaust side. I highly recommend doing intake, intake lobe and exhaust lobe, not just assume that the intake's close or correct. So now we're gonna we reset our dial indicator. We're on the exhaust side. We're gonna rotate around until the exhaust lifter starts to rise there to 50 thousandths, just like we did on the intake side. And we're gonna take our reading, and our reading is 65, the exhaust valve opening at 65. And the card's calling for 64, so we're one degree early, which is well within the uh, limit of acceptability, especially since the chain has not stretched and there's no valve train load on here yet. Once we assemble all the springs and rockers as a whole package, uh, a lot of engines could be you know one to two degrees behind. So being a little bit advanced is, is good for a couple different reasons. So we'll, all the way, we'll roll all the way through and check uh, peak valve lift, peak lobe lift rather, and we are at 435 and just a smudge, which is correct because the card's calling for 435. So we'll go back down and close. So we'll run out on the base circle there. Check our zero. Go in reverse rotation past the 50 thousandths all the way to about 100 thousandths away. Change direction and closing to 50 thousandths away from closing again. And we are at about 20 and a half, close to 21 and the card calls for 22. So there again, we're, we're about one early on both sides, which okay. makes sense. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave this cam where it's installed now, and knowing once the chain gets a little, little time on it and we get all the load, valve train load, springs, and rockers, everything functioning, it'll, it'll lose a little bit there too. So we're gonna go uh, leave this as is and just start checking other uh, aspects of the motor. You would not want the largest dimension of the piston to be bigger than like 4.155. That's really something. So as you guys saw, Mr. Craig got all the rings put on the pistons along with hanging the rods on the pistons. So saw a little bit of the spreadsheet on the pistons earlier in the video, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit more in depth. So obviously you already know the bore is 4.1 to 25 bore. So that's the bore on these pistons. And as you obviously see, it's a flat top piston and it has 4.5 cc's of valve relief on the top of the piston. It's got all sorts of other goodies, man. It's got 
ZHP engraved. They look that's, very nice. That's worth at least five right there. Oh yeah. Sure. Plus five for each piston. Plus five horsepower. How about, without further ado, let's get these pistons thrown into the engine. We're gonna see how it all comes together, how it looks. So there you go, we got all of our pistons installed into the engine and man, it's hard to beat a ZHP garage engraved piston. Greg says you won't see it once you put the head on there, but I don't care, you can see it right now. So stay tuned for part two. Next video coming soon. We're gonna be installing the heads, we'll be showing that in the next video. They are some very nice dart heads and plenty more, adjusting the rockers with the rocker geometry and the push rods and everything. So hit the subscribe button down below Stay tuned for the next video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys.